if you have a chance to be successful and you kind of give it all, give it all, you're probably gonna end up not having great of a balance. I think, I think it, even it goes back to like our interaction. Basically, 2011, 2012, 2013, I kind of just like disappeared off the radar. You used to have these uh, parties every week at your house that. Uh, our group would go to, and, and I think starting at around 2010 or 2011, I, I stopped going to most of them because we were just working so much, I think. The inspirational life of Jean Kuhn, the inventor and co-founder of the WhatsApp app. Once a guy who used to clean stores and shops to support his family, is now known as one of the wealthiest persons on the planet. Kum was born to Ukrainian parents in a small village outside Kyiv. His mother was a housewife and his father was a construction manager involved in building hospitals and schools. When Kum was 16 years of age, his family, thus himself, his mother and his grandmother migrated to California from Ukraine due to political issues and a social support program helped his family to get a small two-bedroom apartment and lived off food stamps. His father was supposed to join them in California, but he did not make it across. He died in 1997. Kum's mother had filled a suitcase full of pens and Soviet-issued notebooks so that they would not have to pay for school supplies in the United States. In order to make ends meet, Kum's mother took up a job babysitting while Kum swept floors at a grocery store. Later, Kum's mother contracted cancer and succumbed to the disease in the year 2000. Kum was not particularly fond of school, but he got interested in computer programming when he was 18 years old. He took admission at San Jose State University and simultaneously worked as a security tester at Ernst Young, a multinational professional service network. He met Brian Acton while working there. Using manuals from a second-hand bookstore, he taught himself computer programming. Jean Kuhn was hired by Yahoo as an infrastructure engineer and thereafter left the job at Ernst Young. He worked at Yahoo for the next seven years along with Brian Acton. By this time, they had become close friends. He and Brian Acton quit the job at Yahoo in the year 2007. Kuhn with Acton applied to work at Facebook, but both got rejected. Kuhn bought an iPhone and predicted that App Store would produce a whole new industry of apps, so he decided to develop an app and named it WhatsApp, which sounded like WhatsApp. One week later, on his birthday, 4th February in the year 2009, he incorporated WhatsApp in California. Hey man. Nice to meet you. Alexander. Yeah, Very nice to meet you. Welcome to... Uh, this is WhatsApp. I'm actually yes. at WhatsApp. Yes, you are at WhatsApp. I heard we're the first camera crew yes. ever to ever. film in here. Ever. You are. That's just exciting. Because we're so popular in other ones, we cannot say no. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I just throw it on the floor. We're pretty casual here. Yeah, I see. You're a casual, casual. You should have seen me 10 minutes ago. I just got back from the gym. So, so, you actually put some nice clothes on for Just us. for you. Good. So how many people actually work at WhatsApp? So we have uh, approximately 30, 35 people. Um, this is our server team. So this is the guys who take care of the servers and make sure all the servers are running. We have a customer support team. So. Anytime you have a problem and you send us an email and you say, hey, my WhatsApp is having problems or my phone is having problems, this is the people who will help you answer. Doesn't it surprise you that people trust, apparently, your service so much that they don't even know your name or your face and still they're happy to send 7 billion messages a day with very personal information? Doesn't that ever surprise you that it's so easy? No. It doesn't. But you wouldn't trust a service where you don't know the people who are behind it. You would want to know who are these people, can I trust them, what are they like. 
I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I drive, I buy a car without knowing who's behind, who runs the car company, right? I go to a restaurant and I eat at a restaurant without knowing who owns a restaurant, right? I mean, if you think about our daily interactions and everything we do in daily lives, we don't need to have a face attached to everything we do, right? I mean, we're, we're filmed on a camera right now and you trust this camera will make a good quality video, but you don't know the guy who started this camera company, you don't know his name, you don't know his face. But we can find a lot of information and a lot of interviews if we want to. If you can, can we search for you on YouTube, there's nothing. Well, that's because we've been busy building a great product that you use. Yeah. The app was initially unpopular, but Apple soon added push notifications ability to apps in 2009. Soon people began to replace SMS with WhatsApp. The app gained popularity and users began to increase. Kum convinced Acton, who was unemployed at that time, to join the company. Soon, Acton was granted a status of co-founder as he brought $250,000 of fortune in seed funding. On February 9, 2014, Mark Zuckerberg, co-founder of Facebook, invited Kum to dinner and asked him to join the company. It was later announced that Facebook acquired WhatsApp for 19 billion US dollars. I think the relationship with Facebook uh, has helped us uh, focus on growth and uh, it has helped us focus on making a product better, which is what something that has always been important to us. Since the acquisition, we, we were basically able to continue down the uh, path and, and execute on a vision that me and Brian and the team has always had. So we launched things like voice calls, for example, last year, and we've launched things like a web client uh, for WhatsApp. That, that is something we always wanted to do. And for example, with something like voice calls, we were able to launch it using Facebook infrastructures. So today we're announcing that WhatsApp is going to be free for consumers. We're not going to charge people a dollar a year anymore because it really doesn't work that well in, in a lot of countries and it's hard for people to pay. They don't have a credit card. They don't even have a bank account. And we just don't want people to think that at some point their, their uh, communication with the world will be cut off. It creates this kind of anxiety in, in our networks that we don't want people to have. And so when we think about our philosophy of building something that is utilitarian, that, that helps users in their daily lives when they communicate with their friends and family, we kind of want to experiment with doing the same with businesses and make sure, make sure that the communications that you have with businesses is just as efficient, it's just as easy, and it's just as simple as what we've done with consumer space. We already have anecdotal reports of people using WhatsApp for businesses. We have people in India uh, use what we have somebody who runs a deli shop who takes order for sandwiches uh, in India through WhatsApp and just makes sandwiches for people. We, we know of people who, um, we keep hearing the story about you know, somebody who makes chocolates and sells chocolates through, through WhatsApp to their clients. So we already have all these anecdotal evidences of, of people using WhatsApp to help power and help run their small businesses. And we just want to build better tools and better user experience to make it available to to larger set of uh, commercial enterprises and people who want to communicate with those commercial enterprises. According to Forbes, Jan Kuhn was among the list of 400 richest Americans in 2014, with an estimated net worth of 7.5 billion US dollars. His current net worth is at estimated to be 10 billion US dollars. WhatsApp remains to be an undefeated messenger app in the world. Thank you for checking out this video. I am glad that you did. And if you're new here, kindly subscribe to this channel. If you've been here already, kindly give, kindly give us a thumbs up. Thank you and stick around for more contents like this. See you in our next video. Bye.